This video will cover the topic graphing an exponential function f of x equals b to the negative x or f of x equals negative b to the a times x. What is an exponential function? An exponential function is similar to other functions we have looked at, except the variable x in the function is the power instead of the base. Functions of the form f of x equals negative b to the x, f of x equals b to the negative x, and f of x equals negative b to the negative x are all exponential functions because as we can see, the variable x is in the power and not the base. Exponential functions have some positive number other than 0 and 1 as the base, since 0 to any power is 0, and 1 to any power is always 1. Also, when graphing these functions, there is always a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So, will the graph of an exponential function ever cross the x-axis? No, it will always be either entirely above or entirely below the x-axis depending on b. If the base of the exponential function b has no negative sign in front of it, the graph of the function will be above the x-axis. However, if there is a negative sign in front of the b value, the graph will be below the x-axis. To start graphing exponential functions, we pick an x value and then substitute it into the function to find the corresponding y values. We can then plot the points we have solved for. Let's start with the example graph the exponential function f of x equals 2 thirds to the negative x. We will substitute y for f of x. Now, let's start by plotting points on the graph with x values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. To help us, we can make a table of our x and corresponding y values. Our first x value is negative 2, so we'll substitute this into our function and find our y value. We have 2 thirds to the negative negative 2, but two negative signs make a positive, so this equals 2 thirds squared, which equals 2 thirds times 2 thirds, and this equals 4 over 9. We have now found the y value associated with x equals negative 2. Let's find y when x equals negative 1. Following the same procedure as before, we can see that 2 thirds to the negative negative 1 equals 2 thirds to the 1, which just equals 2 thirds. And this is the y value associated with x equals negative 1. Next, let's find the y value when x equals 0. And we see that we get y equals 2 thirds to the negative 0. But anything to the 0 power is just 1, so our answer is y equals 1. Now let's find the y value when x equals 1. We see we have 2 thirds to the negative 1. But how do we solve for y when our exponent is negative and not positive? Well, we take 1 over the base value 2 thirds, and we can change the exponent from negative to positive as a result. This gives us just 1 divided by 2 thirds, which equals 3 halves. Finally, let's solve for our last y value when x equals 2. We will solve for this in a similar way as what we did previously when x equals negative 1. This means we take 1 over the base value 2 thirds and change the exponent from negative to positive. This gives us 1 over 2 thirds squared. We saw from our first y value that 2 thirds squared equals 4 ninths, which means down here we have 1 over 4 ninths and this equals 9 over 4. This is our last y value. Now that we have our x and y values, let's plot the points to complete our graph. We start by drawing our horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Then we plot our points. Our first point is x equals negative 2, y equals 4 ninths. Our second point is x equals negative 1, y equals 2 thirds. Our third point is x equals 0, y equals 1. Our fourth point is x equals 1, y equals 3 halves. And our last point is x equals 2, y equals 9 fourths. Finally, we draw a curve through our points to complete our graph. For this exponential function, because there was no negative sign in front of our base value b, we assumed that the graph of this function would be entirely above the x-axis and we can see that this is correct. 
So when graphing an exponential function, we first need to recognize that because of the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, the graph will not cross the x-axis, it will either be entirely below or above the x-axis. Then we choose some x values and substitute them into the function to find the corresponding y values. Once we have find a few points, we can accurately plot our graph. You got it!